Hi guys. This is the second part to the Maximus tutorials, where I'll be covering the controls in more detail. If you haven't watched the first video, I highly recommend it before continuing. To begin, always make sure your Maximus is reset by going to Presets and choosing Default. Cool, so let's start with the most important part of Maximus, the compressor. Maximus has four compressors, and if you understand compression, you know that any compressor has three basic controls, threshold, ratio, and gain. Maximus's compressor is different to many in that the ratio and threshold are controlled directly from this section here, whilst the gain controls are located here. The way it works is this. This section is the analysis of volume in versus volume out. In the default preset, the compressor on each band will just be a brick wall limiter at zero decibels, which means that the threshold is zero decibels and the ratio is infinity to one. Using this preset, if your project is well mixed, you won't hear much compression straight away, but that's a good sign. It's good practice to run through your track at this point and identify the loudest parts so you can set your thresholds accordingly. So, to set your compression up, Grab this point and simply drag it around. You can also curve these lines to soften or harden up the compression. Then, as stated in the previous video, you can use the pre-gain to push the signal past your set threshold. To fine tune the levels further, you can disable the snap here using this control. This freeze button allows you to analyze a particular level more closely by disabling the editor controls and displaying the values in the top left of the DAW. This control here is a stereo shaper for the individual bands. Move it left to separate and right to merge. By separating a band stereo image, you are widening the sounds that are already in a stereo image even further. The opposite applies for merging the channels will be squeezed into a mono image. The envelope controls are the same as any other compressor, with slightly more control here. For example, we can curve the attack and release parameters to change what is known as the envelope tension. The attack and release curves are straightforward. They merely introduce soft or hard knee curves into the envelope. The release to parameter, however, introduces a second curve to the release and attack which allows for a smoother transition between the two parameters. The steepness of the curve can be changed here. This image should help you understand the differences in curve steepness. I admit FL doesn't give any hints on this. So to help you understand the scale, 4 is linear, no curve, 3 is a negative curve, and 5 is a positive curve. The look ahead control has been covered in compression tutorial. Peak and RMS are different methods of measuring the input amplitude. In a nutshell, peak concentrates on displaying the actual input values for the peak of the transients in the waveform. RMS uses a different method, which displays the root mean square for input values at a given time. This means it displays the average input value at that time, based on previous transients. There are more complex differences, but we won't get into them right now. This control here sets the look-ahead delay. As previously stated in the compression tutorial, the look-ahead splits the output into two copies, mutes the first and delays the second by a fraction of a second. The signal shown in the analyzer is the muted signal, and this look-ahead delay controls how long that delay is between analysis and input. This is particularly handy when the compressor has an auto-gain control, but Maximus doesn't feature that. The low mid high mix control allows you to parallel compress your mastered signal with the original unmastered one. You can also use this as a bypass by setting the mix to 0%. This final section features the band limit parameters. As soon as you change the lower high band parameter, the bands panel will open so you can fine tune your band segments. Underneath these controls are the cutoff steepness curves. The default cutoff is 24 decibels per octave, which means that for every octave in frequency, 
the amplitude will drop by 24 decibels. It's also known as a fourth order filter. The left order determines the steepness of the high cut on the low band, and the right order determines the steepness of the low cut on the high band. The low cut parameter removes excess muddy bass in the mix. I normally set this parameter to match the low frequency response of my speakers. For me it's 35Hz, but for most it's about 40Hz and upwards. This ensures that even if your master is played on speakers with a lower response than yours, there will be no frequencies that you've missed and accidentally compressed. The arrows next to the low cut control allow you to store all current parameter positions in a spare state so you can A-B them with different settings later.